I would like to share the story of Aisha, my daughter, my biggest inspiration. Aisha passed away in 2015 when she was just 18 years old. She died of pulmonary fibrosis, which is a progressive hardening of the lung. Aisha was born without any immune system, for which she had to undergo a bone marrow transplant. However, the chemotherapy that she had to undertake for the conditioning of her body ended up damaging her lungs. And ironically, what saved her immune system ended up taking her life. But this is not about a sad story about a young, talented girl dying so young, but an inspiring story of a young, talented girl who lived life so well that she lit up the skies. She achieved more than many of us can do in a lifetime. She is a inspirational speaker and her TED Talks are on YouTube. She is the author of her best-selling book called My Little Epiphanies, which is available on Amazon. And very recently, uh, her life inspired the making of a Bollywood movie called The Sky is Pink. And I would recommend that you watch it if you haven't already, because I do think it is the best movie in the world. Now, Aisha was able to achieve so much when she was so young because of her attitude. Her attitude of living life on her terms, her attitude of making every single day count and every moment magical. And I think specifically, I get inspired by Aisha's courage, by her sense of gratitude and her sheer joy of living that she had. If you look at this self-portrait that Aisha made, it probably captures her attitude better than anything I can say. And if you look carefully, you can see that there are some words written on her self-portrait and the words say, we are here to laugh at the odds and live life so well that death will tremble when it comes to take us. And tremble it did when it came to Aisha. Such was the intensity with which she loved and lived life. Aisha writes in her book on courage, pick the highest mountain to climb on and the dullest of the days to shine on, that we cannot help the cards that life deals us, but we can certainly help how we play that hand by jumping as high as we can from wherever we are, by being the very best that we can be by focusing on that over which we have control and not on what's happening to us. That was the courage with which Aisha approached her life. She was just 13 when I shared with her the heartbreaking news about the prognosis of pulmonary fibrosis that she had perhaps no more than five years to live. I of course promised her that as a father, I would do everything and more to not let that happen and to help find a cure if there was one. Whilst we were dealing with this um, devastating news, Ted reached out to me asking if I was willing to speak on leadership. And I shared with them what was happening with Aisha. And then they asked if Aisha would want to instead speak. So I go to Aisha and ask her, would you like to speak on Ted? And Aisha said, Dad, are you kidding me? I can barely speak to five people and you want me to speak to two or three hundred people? And then she paused and said, is Ted the same thing that my brother Rishan thinks is super cool? I said yes and then I knew that I had her because Aisha wanted to do it because Ishan thought it was a cool thing to do. And she said to me, you know what Dad, I don't think I can and therefore I must. So she picked this mountain to climb on. And then she went to be and she rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed some more and delivered an absolutely outstanding talk for which she got a standing ovation. 
So have a listen and, and remember this is the 14 year old girl talking for the first time on a stage of their stature. So as we now know, there's always something in life to sing about, something to be grateful for. I'm grateful for my loving family, my friends, my dogs. In fact, I'm even grateful for the challenges that life has thrown at me, for which I've experienced life with a much greater intensity than I would have otherwise. And I do believe that my soul would have no rainbow if my eyes had no tears. Thank you for listening. My soul would have no rainbow if my eyes had no tears. It was absolutely incredible and a very proud moment for me as a father to see Aisha standing on stage and doing something that she knew was very difficult, but then she focused on it and rehearsed and rehearsed, focused on what she could do and did an absolutely extraordinary job in presenting her thoughts and sharing that with the world. Now the disease fibrosis is a very cruel disease and before long, uh, Aisha was wheelchair bound. She would not walk and go to school, attend her normal school uh, schedule. She loved school, she loved her kids, her friends. So she said to my wife and she said, Mom, um, I know I can't do full time school, but I would love to still do maths if I can. But you know what, I would love to do painting. I'm very drawn to painting. I think it's a, a wonderful thing to do and a, and a great way to express yourself and your emotions. So there she went again, not focusing on what was happening to her, that she couldn't walk, she was in a wheelchair, but focusing on what she had control over. Setting herself a new goal, a new mountain. I want to learn how to paint and then be the very best that I can be at that particular goal. So have a look at a collection of her paintings and remember this was all done within a year. And uh, uh, I think you will agree with me that uh, it was absolutely a superb collection of art that Aisha made. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I certainly think her art is incredible and she loved painting her dogs, Kobe the Labrador and Rolo the Pug and also her mom. So this particular portrait that you see on the screen is that of my wife. So feeling a bit left out, I went to Aisha and I said, Aisha, what about painting your dad? And she looked at me and she said, Dad, come on, I only paint beautiful people. <laughs> so Aisha had uh, always a way of getting underneath my skin and letting me know exactly where I stood. She had a great sense of humor. She was so spunky. Now the disease progressed and now she was not only wheelchair bound, but she also was reliant on full-time oxygen. So Ted called again and then they asked Aisha, you were such a star the first time around, we would love for you to speak again. And Aisha said, you know, just look at me. Um, I'm not in the same physical condition as I was. She, she said to me and she said, I don't think I can do this, Dad. And then she paused and she said, you know what? Even though I'm on full-time oxygen, if you can allow me to speak without oxygen for 10 minutes, then I will do it. And I said, Aisha, how, how can you even think of doing it? It's like if I was to ask all of you to just hold your breath, just hold your breath and then try and speak at the same time. It's very difficult. So I was concerned for Aisha and I said, Aisha, how can you, why would you want to do that? And she said, you know, Dad, I don't want when I walk up on stage for people to see, oh, this poor little girl feel pity for me and look at my illness and look at my outward disability. I want them to see me for who I am and what I stand for. So in that moment I realized, well, there she goes again, pick another mountain to climb on and do your very best to get on top. And that's what she did. She started uh, training like an athlete, um, conditioning her muscles without oxygen, one minute, two minutes, then all the way to 10 minutes. And then she gave this absolutely stunning speech. I'm gonna play that for you and as I do that, have a look, she's actually now sitting down because she can't stand and she's also visibly getting out of breath, but she just keeps going, keeps going and does it to the very best of her ability. Have a look. So happiness is an attitude. Happiness is doing what you truly love. And I feel that happiness can only come from acceptance. I accept who I am and I accept where I'm at and I accept the challenges 
that I'm battling with today. And I'm even more determined to make the most of this wonderful gift of life that God has given me. Enjoy life. There's plenty of time to be dead. Um, and again, she had a profound impact on the audience with what she said and how she said it. That the disease kept progressing and making it more and more difficult for her every single day. And now she was bedridden. She couldn't even sit up in her wheelchair on full-time oxygen. Lying in bed and uh, just uh, feeling very bored. And she said to uh, her mom, Mom, I'm so bored just lying here watching television shows all the time, just listening to music. Isn't there something else I could be doing? And my wife Aditi said, why don't you read, Aisha? Here's a book by Hugh Prather called Notes to Myself. It's a best-selling book. Have a read. Perhaps you will enjoy reading. So Aisha reads the book, finds the conversational style of uh, the book rather intriguing, but does say that I think I can do better, typically uh, Aisha. Um, and uh, she goes on to then uh, say that, you know, Dad, I, I have so many thoughts, so many original thoughts in my mind, so many epiphanies. I think I should start capturing them on my phone because she was so weak, she couldn't really write. So pulls out her iPhone and start writing her thoughts and her musings. And before I know it, she's got five or 6,000 words put together. Um, and I find that as I read them to be truly extraordinary, uh, courageous, honest, and very truthful. Describing her take on life, on the ups and downs, the highs and lows, the love and the despair, um, the helplessness and the gratitude, all the various dimensions of this wonderful thing that we call life. And she captures that into this book called My Little Epiphanies. The book was released uh, a day after she passed away, but just before she passed away, we happened to get a book, a final printed version of it in her hand and she could actually feel the embossed title, which felt like Braille, even though her eyes were closed, she knew that her job was done. I want to share with you an interview that she did just a few days before she passed away. And what is the message you want to tell the world? I think basically everyone's just fighting their own battles together and we're all on a roller coaster ride. And mine's been going particularly down this year and I felt so like stuck and so um, writing this book has really uplifted me and so I wanted like my readers to find peace on whatever roller coaster ride they may be on so I hope that's what will happen. Thank you Aisha. So that was Aisha for you. She was, even in her last days, knowing that she had limited time, was focused of making every single day count and every moment magical. And speaking of magic, Aisha realized that, you know, we all can see the um, everyday miracles in our life if we look at it through the lens of gratitude. Some of us keep this gratitude journal every day, where at the end of the day, we just, through the lens of gratitude, just take a moment to step back and recognize all the incredible things and the miracles that are happening every day for all of us. And she writes this in her book just a few months before she passes away, when she's lying in bed, can barely move. And Aisha writes, I'm blessed to have my ears so I can listen to the sound of my mother's laughter. I'm blessed to have my lips so I can speak to those I love. I'm blessed to have my hands so I can paint whenever I please. I'm blessed to have my legs so I can still walk on this earth. I must remember that I am blessed. I must remember that I'm blessed. I think all of us must remember that we are blessed and be grateful for all of those blessings in our life right now, all those incredible things that are going so well, all the people that we love and all the people 
who love us. And let's just resolve to hold them even tighter, to hug them even closer and to let them know how much they mean to us. Aisha was scared about dying and I think she writes, my biggest fear of death is the notion that it is all over the finality of death, the irreversibility of death, what was really concerned her. And I still remember on the day before she passed away, she held my hand and she tugged at it and she said, Dad, she whispered, I don't want to die. And that it was so devastating for me to hear as a father because as a parent, as you all know, our instinct is to protect and preserve our children and not to helplessly watch them pass away. And that's why I find it um, healing to be able to talk about Aisha. I find it healing that she has left behind a legacy, her talks, her book, the movie, The Sky is Pink. And through all of those, I do believe that Aisha comes back to life in the hearts of millions of those who come across her incredible story. So as we look for a way forward and try to make sense of all of this, searching for answers, we read this in our book, it says if you can't change your own life, there is always someone else's. And the fact that true joy really lies in the act of giving and serving others. I should die because we could not find a bone marrow donor. There was no bone marrow registry at that time. And finally, Aisha writes in a book that let's aim for the moon as we live life. Let's aim for greatness. As we do that and as we walk in the darkness together and deal with all the challenges that life throws at us, let's just remember to take a pause, take a deep breath and catch the glittering stars along the way, the many blessings that we have along the way. Let's celebrate that. Let's be determined to live life to the fullest as we live life every single day. Thank you very much for listening.